Hi there, I'm Laura. Thank you so much for joining us in this community meditation practice. If you would like to join us for the live sessions in our free community meditations that we hold every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time through our Zoom classroom, you can use the link below to check out the schedule in the virtual studio. I hope to see you there. Welcome to our Sunday meditation session. Get us ready for the week and help us to root down a little bit more into our connection with the niyamas of taking the kind of the guiding principles that yoga gives us and seeing how they help us to figure things out <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. So we talked about saucha. We talked about the process of cleansing, of dropping the things that cling to us, of clearing away some of the things that get stuck and kind of create this outer layer. And that's a really key part of finding that clarity when we're working with the koshas that we want to be able to look down and see into that center. There needs to be a process to create clarity. So we have our yoga practice, we have breath work, we have um, all these different ways to create a physical, energetic, mental clearing, clearing process so that we can see down a little bit more easily. And then we get really the one of the main points that we're working on in all of our practices, which is connecting to the true self. And there's this really neat thing that happens when we're working on that process. And it's this realization that there's a different type of contentment that we have. There's, of course, the external contentment. Maybe, you know, things in your life are going really well at a certain moment. It could just be, you know, sitting there and drinking your cup of tea on a really nice morning or just like a little moment where you feel so settled, so connected. Not that it's a wonderful experience. <laughs> of course, we all love those. But then there's a different type of contentment that we can also find that has nothing to do with our external circumstances. It is this really special version of contentment that resides in our deeper layers and it is unaffected by the things that are going on around us. When there's a lot of chaos going on, there can be um, a little bit more junk that builds up on the layers that makes it hard to see. So those practices of creating clarity support the process of then being able to go in and find that deep inner sense of contentment. So I'm going to read you this interesting little passage. So this, of course, is one of the main books that I use when I'm teaching the Yamas and the Niyamas by Deborah Adele. I find it to be the most concise and easy to absorb. It's not, it's not the type of philosophy book where you have to like really sit there and, and like rack your brain to understand it. It's very clear. I mean, it's so easy to absorb. And she does such a great job of looking at each of the yamas and the niyamas from several different perspectives. So on Santosha, this internal experience of contentment, it says, when we expect the world to meet our needs, we turn outside of ourselves to find sustenance and completion. We expect our partners to fulfill us our jobs to meet our needs, and success to solve all of our problems. And when it doesn't, we continue to play the if-only game, 
looking for that one more thing before we play the planning and regretting game. We let our contentment be managed by all of these uncontrollable variables. As long as we think satisfaction comes from an external source, we can never be truly content. Looking outward for fulfillment will always disappoint us and keep contentment one step out of reach. So this really speaks to that experience of we might very well have moments of external contentment when things really line up. But the type of contentment that we're talking about here, that we're trying to connect to here, is a much deeper experience. And it's always there. That's the great news. I mentioned in our lecture on Friday how we think that if we work hard enough and we fix enough things in our life, that we'll wake up one day and everything will be in place finally. Like all the things are the way that I want them to be. Now I can finally feel content. And that's really kind of this, um, this idea that we get stuck in that keeps us on the treadmill of trying to fix everything. But the the reality of it is actually much better than that. We don't have to have all of the things in our life fall into line to experience contentment. All we have to do is work through our practice and move our way down to that deeper layer, and it's there. It's always there. Even when there is a little bit of chaos and turmoil around us, it's still there. So last week we went through the koshas and we're going to do something similar. We'll just focus a little bit more on the outer layer of bliss. I think of contentment as kind of being like that very first experience when you start to get to the bliss layer, that fifth layer. So that's going to be the focus of our practice today. Go ahead and start to get your body into a spot where it feels supported, but you have enough physical effort that it maintains your alertness. We want a sharp, attentive mind. Maybe using a couple of breaths to connect with that upward movement, that upward lift. start to find this interesting balance. There's this upward lifting through the body to keep that alertness of the mind. But there's an internal feeling of settling, of anchoring down. We start to see how can I root myself into this moment? Is it a focus on my breath that keeps me anchored? Is it a focus on the feeling of my body sitting, that feeling of support? Perhaps it is that very classic position of the hand, the thumb and the finger touching. That can be a point that anchors our attention.
When we arrive here in our practice, and then give yourself just a little feeling of gratitude or congratulations that you overcame the friction that often comes up that keeps us from coming to our mat to practice, to coming to our cushion. That is often the biggest obstacle, just getting here. And you already did that. So hard part is over. We can use our gentle grounding mantra, saying to yourself, here I am. Here I am, watching moment by moment as my experience unfolds in front of me. Taking a moment to remind yourself of your connection to safety is the most important thing to our nervous system and know that it is safe so that we can then go into a little bit of challenge. And we create that sense of safety by reminding yourself of where you are physically. This is my meditation space. This is a space of comfort, Hopefully it's a nice temperature. You have something supportive to sit on. This is your physical safety. And as you take inventory of that, notice if your body softens at all. Notice if maybe the breath softens. And we go to that next important layer of our inner safety. And that is the trust that you have in yourself. Whatever experience comes up, within your practice that you will find a way to navigate it. That if you need to rest or you need to open your eyes, that you will listen to yourself and take care of that need. As you remind yourself of that connection to your inner safety, notice what that feels like. And we start to expand that awareness to our body. Feeling yourself sitting here. Perhaps there's an image of your mind that you can see your body. And as you scan your attention through the body, you might start to notice something that feels tight or uncomfortable. That is a natural place our attention goes first. That always takes priority. So there might be some tension somewhere. There might be some soreness or pain. Sometimes we know exactly why it is there. 
Maybe you were doing something earlier and that is the residue of whatever activity you were participating in. But sometimes we don't know exactly what it's from. And we ask ourselves, okay, I see the things that are a little uncomfortable. Is there anywhere in my body right now where there's a sense of ease or comfort? Let me notice that. We have this expanded version of our awareness where we're making space for both sides of our experience, the not so comfortable as well as the comfortable. We draw the attention down to that next layer of our energy and the simplest way to connect to your energy is just to watch your breath and you might start to notice on this outer layer the body is definitely affected by the things going on around us, the experiences we have. Our energy also can be affected by the things that we did, the people that we were around. All of those things can leave that residue on our energetic layer. We notice how is my energy right now? Is there anything there that I brought with me from earlier that maybe I can soften my hold on? Maybe I can gently put it down. Start to bring ourselves to that next layer down of the mind and the thoughts. That thinking mind is always thinking. That is what it does. So we step back and we just observe for a moment the thoughts that my mind is creating, are they about my experience right now? Or are there things that are coming back that I did earlier, things that are clinging to me? If you start to notice those things that came with you from earlier in the day or in the week. You notice them. And you see if you can gently encourage yourself to place them down or to soften your hold on them.
with that process of softening. It's like you're drifting down to that next deeper layer. And this is where we cross an important threshold. The body, our energy, our mind, and definitely our emotions are all very much influenced by the things going on in our life. We can feel that residue, whether it's from stress or anticipation, can feel the effects of what's going on in our life very clearly in those three layers. But as we start to cross into that next layer, the wisdom and intuition, it's like we move through this invisible barrier. And we can think of these inner layers as the eye of the storm. This is the place where everything is calm and still. The movement, activity, sometimes chaos that's going on around us does not impact these deeper layers. And you may start to feel that when you drift into the space of wisdom we know the difference between information that comes from wisdom compared to information that comes from the thinking mind because it has a very different tone. Wisdom is calm and clear. It's very soft. It's also why it's easy for us to miss it. It is only when we're able to create that clarity on the outer layers to work our way down that we have enough open space to notice a very soft, gentle voice of wisdom. If we're able to continue that process of softening and sinking down closer to our core, we come to that outer layer of bliss. And bliss is a very strong word, right? It might conjure up images. We think of just barely touching this layer. There's like a glow around it. And that is this soft, light feeling of contentment. It's like this comfortable place to land within yourself. And as we rest here for a moment, we remind ourselves that down to this layer, we are in this space that is unaffected by our outer circumstances. That experience of contentment is always there. We might lose sight of it. We might have more difficulty experiencing it at times in our life when there's a lot of stuff going on. But once you've worked your way down there and once you've felt that experience, 
You always know that it's there. And it's almost like you leave a little trail of breadcrumbs for yourself. Once you've worked to that space and you have felt where your inner contentment resides, you already know the way. You can find your way back here when you need to. Spend a couple of moments Letting ourselves settle here. What is it like letting myself rest here in this ever-present experience of inner contentment? As we rest in that space of contentment, it's like you can peer down through that stronger experience of bliss to the core of our layers, to that piece that we know as the true self or the soul, whatever word you feel like describes your center. If we start that journey back out through our layers, through that space of calm, clear wisdom, out through the always interesting mind and emotions. Through the layer of our energy. And that's the energy that is everywhere in our body that animates us. all the way out to the physical body, the container of all the other layers. And now we know the way. Now we have the map of how to work through our layers down to that space of contentment that is always there. We don't have to stay stuck in that constant process of reaching outside of ourselves, trying to fix or change or finally getting everything to line up just so. Instead, we have that ability to turn in and find a much more constant supportive experience of contentment. So 
And we'll take our last couple of breaths here, soaking in that feeling of perhaps gratitude or connection, maybe just excitement of having this new skill, being able to find your way to this place within. And when you are ready, the eyes open very slowly. And we just start to scan around, looking at the things around us. This is a gentle process of reorienting your nervous system, just like we go slowly at the end of our yoga practice. We go slowly at the end of our meditation. Okay. So the koshas, these layers that we I've talked about it's a, a deep topic. And some of you have done a, a five week series with me, really working your way through each of them. There's a, there's a lot to do on each of those layers, but this is a particularly helpful skill and perhaps a very different orientation where we go through most of our life constantly seeking happiness, satisfaction um, from our external circumstances. And that becomes quite exhausting. So turning that in and finding this other way to get access to that feeling of contentment can be quite a shift. Right. I think, is it the full moon today or tomorrow? It's, I can see it right out my window here. We're very close. If it's not today, I think it's got to be tomorrow. But it's great timing. Right, so questions, comments, interesting things that came up. Anything that you'd like to share, you can unmute. You can jump in the chat. Hi there, I'm Laura. Thanks for being here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you are subscribed. You can also head over to lauragyoga.com to get into our virtual yoga studio. That is our community for healing and self-development through the techniques of yoga therapy. You can join us for meditation sessions, therapeutic workshops, live yoga classes. You can check out the on-demand yoga therapy library with over 400 videos and growing every day. And you can also book a private session to work with me as a yoga therapist. You might want to check out one of these videos picked out especially for you, and I will see you in the next one.